Uh, so let's have a look at texturing, uh, Z-app link and poly painting. And what this card is basically demonstrating is if I uh, zoom in here and we'll have a look, you can clearly see that I, uh, I'm rendering off in layers. And if you're working in production, this, this is what you're going to be doing as well. You're going to be thinking about rendering off uh, specularity passes, diffuse passes, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So here clearly I have a specularity pass that deals with the entire body. I have a subdermal pass, which is essentially, if you're going to be doing a subsurface scattering, this is what you would be, uh, this is uh, uh, your subdermal pass uh, for that. And then obviously I have my dermal, which is basically just my color information. And, and I could have gone um, and basically just created a, a very basic uh, one-tone color on this, but I, I, I find you really don't get any depth and you really don't get, uh, you kind of lose some of the realism uh, from from uh, doing that. So uh, so paying attention and doing a two-tone and uh, in fact going in and uh, thinking about uh, the color situation and the pinks and all that sort of stuff is important. So in fact, if we have a look at the next card, you'll actually see, uh, again, just a close-up of uh, the specularity, which is just the material that is applied, the subdermal, which is, of course, uh, my blemishes and uh, my fatty tissues and the, the veining, and, uh, and then again, my color, and, it, and uh, again, a two-tone, and thinking about some of the fleshy areas. and. Uh, and really, I'm going to take these elements and take them into Photoshop and combine them and be able to create the end result that I want. Now, let's have a look at that, at that inside of ZBrush. First of all, let's have a look at the, uh, the material palette itself. And you're going to see that there's two different uh, sets of materials. So there's basically the basic or the standard material down here, and then here's your matte cap materials up here. Now, the matte cap materials, the, ba the, the main difference of the matte cap materials is that Really, what you're seeing is you're seeing materials that have baked in lighting, or be it uh, if you're uh, applying a material that uh, that is a sculpey, for instance, that has a translucency to it. Really, what you're uh, what you're seeing is that trans the translucency of it is the lighting information. So, if you're going to be doing uh, rendering uh, inside of ZBrush, obviously this is uh, a little bit of an issue because it has uh, it has uh, the lighting information baked into it. There's a way around that, and I actually want to show you uh, how to do that once we get into uh, ZAppLink. So really, you have, uh, you have how to use all of these materials and be able to uh, light and do whatever you want inside of ZBrush. Very, very cool. Now, uh, one of the things that you're going to be noticing is that as I scroll over these matte cap materials, you can see that uh, my, my character is actually uh, showing me a representation of them um, as uh, I, being applied to the character itself. So I'm going to go ahead and um, let's see which one I'll select here. Let's select hmm. let's select the pearl. Now, one of the things that, uh, that confuse uh, people is just not understanding what's happening right now and, and here's what you uh, here's what you want to get out of this. Essentially right now what I've done is I've loaded the matte cap into the material channel. It is not applied to my character. So if I want to apply that material to my character, what I need to do is I need to activate these buttons up here first of all. And I need to decide whether I want the material, whether I want the RGB value of it, or whether I want the material and RGB value of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pick a color that I guess is... Uh, Let's find somewhat of a, a neutral kind of skin. I guess that's okay. So with that, now I can go up here and click. What I want is I want the material and the color information. So I'm going to click on material and RGB. And then in color, there's this button here, fill object. So I'm going to go ahead and click on fill object. So now what this has done, if I look at my subtool, you're going to see that this subtool has uh, that material assigned to it. In fact, if I start moving this around, you're going to see that the eyes do not have anything associated with them. And that's because they're a subtool. They're a separate object. They're a separate tool. So I'm going to go ahead and actually apply a, uh, 
a material, a separate material, and a color to that as well. So let's just go down here. And in fact, I'm going to take the toy plastic, and I'm going to go with like a black. So again, I want the material and the color, and I'm going to go color, fill object. Oops, look what I did there. I'm going to undo that. And uh, the layer that I was on was the layer, uh, was the head layer. So I'm gonna, I need to make sure that I'm on the proper layer. So let's select the, the eye. And then I'll do a color fill object. So of course now that it has applied it to the eyes himself. So if I start moving this around, you can see that now the, eye, the, the color does not change. So uh, understanding that really will make your life a lot easier. Now, an, another cool thing is, let's say that you're working in a production. And in the production environment, you have established a color palette for uh, a particular character or a color palette for a background or scene. Uh, that color palette really becomes your, uh, uh, your guideline and you must use that. Well, you can take your color palette, load it into this, this texture window, and then do a crop and fill of that, uh, of that color palette. And it'll drop that color palette onto your background. Once that color palette is on your background, then you can redraw your character and you can actually pick the colors. And the way you do that is simply by clicking on your color window here. And you can see that it, as you bring it out onto your canvas, it turns into a picker. So then you can actually pick um, a very specific color. So I can go in there and pick that color and then now uh, modify it or use it. So very, uh, very cool way to be able to do uh, get very specific on, in terms of your color palette and, uh, and what you're using on your show. So let me go ahead and actually show you. Let's go ahead and use a standard, that's fine. I'm gonna use a spray stroke and I'm gonna turn the alpha off. And I just wanna show you uh, poly painting. And poly painting really is, now well, let's make sure that we're on the, the proper layer here. So let's go ahead, uh, the proper subtool, the head here. So let's just go ahead and use that. And what I want to do is I want to paint RGB. So I'm going to use RGB. I'm going to turn off Z add because obviously the deformation is not needed. And my Z intensity, if I do 100%, obviously I'm just changing one color for another color. And that's not what I want to do. I want to layer my colors. Again, remember, I want to take something that's opaque and try to make it look translucent. And the way you do that is by building things up. So let's go ahead and turn this pretty low. Um, eight is pretty good. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint. And I'm using spray, and that's fine. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint just arbitrarily some different areas. Okay. So with that one with with that one little technique, I've basically gone in and I've and uh, and I've started to be able to break up the surface and really be able to create uh, some dimensionality with this. So keeping keeping with that, I want to show you some some different ways that you can apply color. That really will um, help. Uh, push the sculptor uh, even further. One of the things is I really want to be able to go in and do some dry brushing. Dry brushing is a technique that basically allows me to apply a, um, a thin coat of paint only to the highest surface. So I have masking and as long as I have masking I have these different abilities that I can mask by cavity, I can mask by intensity, I can mask by hue, saturation, and, and mask by alpha. I'm going to go ahead and mask by cavity. And by default, what this, what this has done is it's basically gone out and searched for all of that information and masked it. So now I can turn View Mask off. And I'm going to uh, select a darker tonality here so that really I'm going to push uh, the crevices in further. And with my RGB value, in fact, I'm going to turn this a little bit lower. Let's, uh, let's try 5. And... In my color, now I can uh, have that ability, remember, to fill the object. So I'm using only 5% of this color, and I've, and I've masked it. So now I can go ahead and go color, fill object. And I'm just going to press this a couple times until I'm happy with, with the result. I think that's pretty good. That's basically gone in and really kind of separated out the deepest points from the highest points. 
and in essence has given me a, a method, a way to be able to go in and do dry brushing. So really fabulous. I can also go in and go back to, uh, well, I've got my standard already, but I can go in and select, for instance, my freehand stroke or my dot stroke. Uh, let's try the dots. And then select an alpha and be able to go in and paint things like veins. So I can select that color. And again, a very low RGB. And I'm going to turn, in this case, I'm going to turn X symmetry off. And you can go in and quickly, uh, use a little bit more. Let's try 15. Let's see that. Just quickly 